Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to the System of Jupiter. In today's video we're going to be talking about the July 2018 discovery of 12 new moons around Jupiter that now put the number of total moons here to 79. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So first of all, Jupiter already had a lot of moons to begin with. As a matter of fact, Jupiter currently stands as the record holder for the number of moons in the system. Uh, these moons can actually be divided into basically different types of moons. And as you can see, they all have very different orbits. But for the most part, you have the so-called classical moons or so-called Jovian moons, which are really just four moons, Io, um, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto, you can kind of see them uh, right in the center, and they all have relatively circular orbits with very, very specific patterns as well. There's also so-called regular moons, these are moons that are normally orbiting in the same direction as Jupiter and also have either relatively circular or low inclined orbits. So like for example, there's a lot of regular orbits you can see, uh, regular moons you can see in the middle here, such as Metis, uh, Thebe and so on. Um, and uh, there's also irregular moons, which is pretty much everything else. This is one of such moons that has no actual name yet. Um, this is another one and the what makes them irregular is basically that they have sort of their own orbit and that's mostly because they uh, were more likely captured asteroids or captured objects from asteroid belt or basically from outside of solar system. These moons, however, the regular moons and the classical moons were most likely made when Jupiter was being created as well. So what have we discovered? Well, we actually discovered um, 12 objects and 11 of these are referred to as normal moons. Well, let me, let me just kind of demonstrate to you by placing them in random orbits around Jupiter. And this is going to be at a distance where each orbit will take approximately two years. So we have, this is uh, all randomly generated for now, but basically here are some of them. We're just going to place them right here. And here's a visual representation of these moons. I actually had to give them the direction opposite of the spin of Jupiter because that's kind of how they move. The, this is sort of yet another type of uh, moons around Jupiter that have um, basically orbit in a direction opposite of everything else in the inner um, region of Jupiter. Now, we've discovered these uh, moons while basically looking for Planet 9. In other words, the scientists trying to find Planet 9 accidentally discovered these 12 moons. But that's not all of them. Two of them were a little bit closer to Jupiter, and they're actually all quite small, only a few kilometers in diameter, uh, but two of them actually had uh, orbits very similar to other moons of Jupiter. So in other words, these are actually regular moons of Jupiter. But then one of them was very, very strange. They actually refer to it as an oddball. And this oddball even has a name now. They uh, gave it a name of Valetudo, which I believe is a Roman god of hygiene. Now I'm going to show you how Valetudo orbits. So remember, these moons are orbiting in clockwise direction. But Valetudo, which I just placed right here, has an orbit of about 1.5 years um, around Jupiter, and it actually orbits against the flow. Pretty much every other moon is going this way, but it's going with the flow. It's actually going um, in the same direction as everything else in the inner system of Jupiter. And this is really unusual. Also, its size is about one kilometer in diameter, making this probably the smallest moon of Jupiter. So it really shouldn't be that circular. I think it's circular because I accidentally generated a circular object here. It's most likely more asteroid shaped. Now, this unusual moon um, has a lot of questions to answer. For example, why is it that it's actually on such an unusual path compared to other moons? And what actually created this moon? Its inclination is relatively um, similar to other objects in, uh, in the inner uh, Jupiter system, meaning that it most likely was formed when the planet was formed as well. So this is probably a very ancient moon yet it's moving all by itself, really, really tiny piece against the flow. So some suggestions indicate that maybe this was actually a result of a collision early on in, in the Jupiter system, where it basically generated this fragment 
and then it kind of flew to the outskirts of the Jupiter system and, and now it orbits here for the rest of its time. But this suggests that maybe there are other objects similar to it that we will discover in the future. If this was a result of a collision, what exactly collided? And if it's not a result of a collision, so how could it possibly form otherwise? The other thing about this moon that makes it very unusual is that it actually has an extremely high chance of one day face on colliding with other moons. And I'm going to demonstrate this in a few seconds um, by basically trying to collide this with another object going in the opposite direction. But it might actually take up to a billion years for it to actually have any serious risk because these objects are really small and the distances between them are really, really large. Well, that's kind of all we know about this moon for now. And if you want to learn more about this, or want to follow the actual study itself. Uh, this is from the Carnegie University, and I believe the principal investigator for this is Scott Shepard. He actually started studying uh, or trying to find Planet Nine back in 2017. And since then, this is actually what they've discovered, accidental moons. Well, let's finish this video by simulating what a collision with another moon would look like here. So we're going to actually pretend as if this is actually another moon going in the opposite direction and literally smacking into the object. The other object is going to be approaching Valuetudo uh, in a few seconds. I actually made a spelling mistake here. It's Valuetudo, not Valuetudo. Um, and it's slightly larger. It's um, maybe about 1.4 kilometers or 1.6 kilometers in um, diameter. And they're moving toward each other at a speed of about 3 kilometers per second, because that's the orbital speed of these objects at this distance from Jupiter. Um, this collision is most likely going to generate quite a lot of uh, debris and it's very likely that this will also result in some sort of a ring, specifically a ring around Jupiter at a relatively far away distance. So there's a high chance that if this collision ever occurs, Jupiter might actually get another ring. It already has a bunch, but it can always use more. So this is slightly slower than normal speed, it's about um, half the normal speed. But here comes the collision, and because it's head-on, it's going to generate a tremendous amount of energy, as you can see. So these uh, large particles escaping from this collision might actually even end up on planet Earth. And that's about it. Now, interestingly, this basically almost completely stopped this object now. So it actually is going to start falling into Jupiter. And at some point, it might also end up re-entering Jupiter's um, atmosphere and basically falling onto Jupiter as well. Now, whether this is actually what happened to other such fragments in the system, I guess time will tell. For now, though, that's all we know about Valitudo and about this unusual discovery of 12 new moons of Jupiter. Anyway, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, and click that big symbol that looks like a bell just so that you get notified about new videos. Come back tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.